Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much just for joining us this evening. My name is Mara de los Reyes, and this is the Hope for Healed Child page. Very excited to have you tonight. I'm just really grateful for those of you who have tuned in to listen. And my biggest heart is just to display the love of the Lord in everything that I speak and share. That is my heart and my goal is to just draw you closer to the heart of the Father. Um, by showing you and demonstrating what he's doing in the lives of others and um, hopefully sharing scripture as well and just really to lead you closer to the Lord. He is so, so, so good and he's been so good in my life. So thank you for joining us this evening. We have um, Jacob Alvarado tonight. He is just a great friend. Him and his wife, Jessica, are amazing people. And um, I have him with us this evening. This is our part two. We did a part one and I just felt like it warranted coming back because when we were wrapping up our time last time, it was hard to get off the conversation. <laughs> and so uh, welcome, Jacob. Thank you so much for joining me again. Hi, everybody. It's an honor to be back. Awesome. So last time um, you shared just a powerful, powerful testimony about some healing when you went to a meeting in Mexico and you were with some uh, leadership team that was just calling people and um, up for healing and praying over people. And you, you actually shared a really powerful story about deliverance and that was amazing and we used some scripture in case that was a little bit out there for some people we used scripture to share that that is a hundred percent um biblical and that deliverance is also needed today but we kind of had wrapped up our conversation with touching a little bit on the holy spirit and i thought you know let's start our time tonight just talking about the holy spirit i know for me in the church that I had gone to, like that was one of the very few things ever taught on. We really learned more about God and more about Jesus in a conversation, but the Holy Spirit was not a teaching. It wasn't anything that um, I knew much about. And so I wanna have that conversation with you tonight, Jacob. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and actually to start us off, I guess I will read just a short paragraph that um, that will lead us into this conversation. It's something that I've been writing and it's going to be a, a book of, of just, just different experiences and teachings, but uh, I'll start us off with this. It says, he stands on an old wooden platform overlooking a sea of people that glisten like wheat in the sun. He sees the hurting, the broken, the lost, the sick, the blind, and the lame. He stands in a foreign land full of foreign people from so many different backgrounds, religions, and faith. The rich and the poor alike, just staring at him. Some stare with anticipation, others in disbelief, and many in wonder. Imagine if you were the one standing there and the hurting people are waiting for you to speak. Do you have the power and the faith that will give them hope? Do you have what it takes to change a nation? And so reading from that, um, I believe that when you're standing before the, the, the sick, the hurting, the lost, many religions, you have to have something to stand on. And for me, that has always been the word of God. And the Holy Spirit has always been the confidence of God that is flowing through me. Um, and that's really what I believe the Holy Spirit comes to do. I, I know in Acts chapter, uh, chapter 2, when the Holy Spirit comes on the disciples, one of the things that I see in the ministry of the Holy Spirit is that when he came upon the disciples, they were completely changed. And yes, I believe in speaking in tongues. Yes, I believe in, in, in all the gifts and the wonderful things of the Holy Spirit. But the transformation that the Holy Spirit does on the person is absolutely undeniable. You see Peter, who before Jesus uh, was crucified, was denied Jesus 
you know, up to three times before the, the rooster crowed. And then after the, his death, resurrection, and the Holy Spirit came on them, Peter was the first one to give the first sermon, and he spoke with power and authority to, and, and there was about 3,000 people that received Christ as their Savior. So all of a sudden, you see the, the transition of this man who before cowered in the face of adversity and then because of the holy spirit be is able to stand before the people who were there um the, probably the same ones that were uh trying to find out if he was a follower of jesus and then now here he is as a witness uh, exclaiming that christ has risen and he's speaking the word of god with power and authority i i just think it's it's absolutely amazing and there's so many people that I have seen that have a really awesome philosophy. They, they follow the philosophies of Jesus, the teachings of Jesus. They, 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 they teach from a place of hermeneutics and, and, and theology. But when you're standing before people that are hurting and you're standing before people that are from different religions and different backgrounds, what is it that is going to differentiate that person from the rest? And if all you have is a philosophy or an idea of Jesus, a teaching of Jesus, so many people have the same thing with their own religions. So there has to be a tangible, physical, I believe, physical difference. And it's clear in the Gospels and it's clear um, in, in the Acts of the Apostles and the Epistles that whenever the gospel of Jesus Christ is preached, his death and resurrection, he performs signs and wonders that follow that confirm the word. And, uh, and that's through the ministry of the Holy Spirit. So I don't know, do you have any, any questions on that? No, I just love that because it's so true. Like the Holy Spirit is transformational. It's, it's, yes. a, it's something that is so transformational and it brings power in a, where a human, in a human mind or in a human setting, people could just be so human, right? <laughs> where yeah, yeah. We could just feel small. We could feel insecure. We could feel like, oh my gosh, this is way bigger than me. But the Holy Spirit comes in and just does a work. And you know what I love about the Holy Spirit personally is the Holy Spirit comes in and does a work over a period of time. Um, yes. And so, you know, the Lord will meet us exactly where we're at. And for me, I feel like it's opening myself up to Lord, where do you want to lead me? Where do you want to lead mm -hmm. me? And that's so different from what I used to think. I was like, God, why am I here? You know, yeah, yeah, in a desperate kind of way because I was so hurting and I did not understand the love of the Lord. I didn't understand His good will and I didn't understand what He wanted. And so now I can I open myself up to the Holy Spirit to say, "Where do you want to lead me? What do you want to say in this conversation? What are you showing me, or how do I interpret this? Uh, what mm -hmm. is it that you want to highlight to me?" So it's kind of that um, it's transformational and it's, it's also relational. That's what I love yes. about the Holy Spirit, but it takes a real conscious effort. Um, if you're not used to doing that, it takes a conscious effort to be in relationship with the Holy Spirit. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I actually was writing something about that last night and uh, I was asking myself some questions and some of the questions that I was asking, I was, I was meditating on the people that I've prayed for and the, the very real situations that they're in. I mean, ter from terminal cancer to, to wheelchairs, to um, sickness and disease. And, and I was meditating and thinking about all the things that I've experienced and the rejection and the failures and the pains and still standing on faith and being willing to be taught by the Holy Spirit, uh, I wrote this and uh, it's, it says, am I willing, am I willing to examine myself and evaluate whether or not I can push through the pain of persistence? Are you able to push through the field of failure 
and lay aside the pride and arrogance to escape the prison of what I think other people think about me or say about me and stand firm against ridicule and rejection until all that is left of myself is the image of the crucified Christ that desires, that yearns to be resurrected in me so that the world can see that Christ is alive. And, uh, and, and so, so just meditating on that, um, there, there is, I believe, a price that needs to be paid, and it's the destruction of, of self. And, and when you're, uh, I remember talking to different people on, on, we'll say healing, for instance, and there's so many doctrines out there against it. There's so many things that, that people will say. And in the beginning, for years, I prayed for people with no results. And that can be discouraging. And I kept, there was still something in my spirit that said, no, this is right. This is true. And I kept going forward, kept going forward. But it, 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 it's the power of the Holy Spirit that, that lights that fire so we can persist and, and hold on. We have to believe. And, and uh, I think that's the only fight, the real fight of faith that we have is to believe and then allow the time for the Holy Spirit to teach us and direct us through all of the pain and the failures and, and the mishaps. So then all of a sudden we come into a place where we can flow and operate with him and then have the most beautiful miracles happen because we were willing to lay aside everything and never give up you know yeah that is so good i absolutely love the line where you said can we push through the pain of persistence and sometimes that standing feels painful yes. it feels like okay god like when or or what now or you know and we can and we can get very um again back to being very humanistic and start asking those questions but the pain of persistence to me is really about you are reading the word and that is your foundation. And when, and when yeah. um, your mind starts asking when or why you just tell your mind, Hey, be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> I just love that. My pastor did uh, this amazing message and he's like, you tell your body what to do. You tell your mind what to do you tell you know it's that emotion you tell your emotions mm -hmm. and that can feel like that's the pain of persistence it's that persisting past what our natural being wants to do and pushing through to where we know god says this is what the word says this is what I, this is the truth yeah absolutely i got i actually got a story to share on that it's, it's really really neat um i was actually listening to one of Andrew Womack's teachings and I don't remember what the teaching was but I remember I was working in an empty house a lot of the times the Holy Spirit comes and talks to me while I'm working in empty houses and I've had some profound experiences I think you've heard some of them but I was working and I turned off my uh the teaching and I was just working and meditating on some of the things that Andrew had said. And all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit spoke and said to my spirit, he says, you have not been operating in the ministry that I've given you. And I'm questioning, like, what are you talking about? And it's funny when the Holy Spirit knows our thoughts and he knew he, he stopped talking because I knew what he was talking about. And he knew I knew that what he was talking about. So he didn't say anything after that. And I said, oh, man, I said, you want me to uh, preach the baptism of the Holy Spirit and to lay hands on people to receive the Holy Spirit. And I said, when do you want me to do that? And, he, and, he, and that night we were going to have a marriage uh, group. And I'm like, oh, man, you want me to do this tonight? And mind you, this group of individuals are from different churches, different places, different backgrounds. They've never, uh, a lot of them have never been exposed. There was a few uh, couples that have been exposed, but uh, to the, to the ministry of the Holy Spirit, but there was a lot that hadn't. And so I get there and I, I feel like a kid 
that's uh, getting ready for show and tell. <laughs> and I was excited because I, I know I heard from God and I'm like, all right. And we start the group and mind you, there's some, some, some situations that some of the couples were going through that were really heavy topic situations. And you could feel that, that presence of, of, of heaviness in the room. And I'm thinking like, God, can you work through this? You know, and, and this is my thoughts. Like, I'm really questioning God, can you work through this? And then, and then that persistence comes. And, yes, of course you can. And, and we get through the meeting and it gets towards the end. And I say, okay, guys, we're going to do something that we have never done. I think we had been meeting for like a year at this point. And uh, I said, God wants me to minister on the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And everyone's like, oh, dang, okay. So I take the Bible and I start in Acts chapter two. And then we, we, and then we start asking other couples what their experiences have been. And there was uh, three couples that, that shared their experience. And it was really neat. And anyone that had questions, we were answering those from the Bible. And I said, okay, I, I think it's time now. The Spirit wants to move. And I said, who wants to receive the, 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 the baptism of the Holy Spirit? And one of the young ladies comes up, she sits down, and then two of the husbands get pushed in there. And I grab my Bible and I open and talk about standing on the word. I opened up to Acts 19 and I read where Paul was preaching to the Gentiles. And he says, uh, you know, he, he says, have you received the Holy Spirit when you believed? And they said, no, we didn't even know that there was a Holy Spirit. And he says, well, then who were you baptized? How were you baptized? He said, under John's baptism, under repentance. And that's where I stopped and paused for a second. And I said, the church at large has preached Jesus and repentance. And then they stopped. And the ministry of the Holy Spirit that should be in operation is not and is hindered because everyone stops at salvation and baptism, a water baptism. And, uh, and I said, so here he says, he says, well, he says, remember, there was going to be someone that would come after John that, uh, that would baptize you in fire. And, uh, and so anyways, he, he, he preaches to them. He lays his hands on them and they receive the Holy Spirit. And began to speak in tongues <clears throat> and they began to prophesy. I said, so I'm going to do exactly what Paul did. <clears throat> I'm going to lay my hands on you and you're going to receive. So I let them into a, a quick prayer and then I laid hands on them and nothing happened. <laughs> Everyone's staring at me. And I'm like, oh, man, I really did it now. You know, like, this is not looking good. And I, I, was, I was thinking that in my heart. And I go, no, God, you told me to do this. I'm doing what your word says. You said to do this. <clears throat> and as soon as I said that, um, the young lady starts speaking in tongues. The whole room shifts. And uh, you could definitely feel the tangible presence of the Holy Spirit in the room. It was the coolest, uh, one of the coolest experiences that, that started launching me into being more confident in ministering the Holy Spirit. That is so awesome. And you know what I love about that? Because sometimes there can be like this, well, God is working in us because the Holy Spirit is in us. So he's working in us and through us. But, you know, it's that kind of like when we pray for people, but the bottom line is when you put the responsibility a hundred percent on Jesus or on the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. you just kind of can take a deep breath and stand in peace and go, if nothing happens, Lord, it's not on me. And when you can stand in that place of really humility, that it is the father who is working, it's, it's the spirit of God working, um, that I just love that. And I love that you kind of step back, like, Hey, you said to do this. And as soon as you were like, <laughs> re remember, I'm being obedient here. Um, and you saw something, something happen in, in the room shifted. I love that. But I love too, um, when you were talking earlier, I was thinking about how the Holy Spirit is so contrary to the world sometimes. Like sometimes we'll get 
an inkling. And when I say that, it's like a feeling or, or, or a, um, let's talk about that for a minute. Like kind of for people to really connect with the Holy spirit, I think it's important to talk about how we hear God because people can, we can all hear God differently. We can hear God in many different ways and some ways will be much stronger than other ways. But I wanted to just touch on that. Yeah, absolutely. I, I've had, uh, there's been four extraordinary events that have happened in my life that are, are experiential. And a lot of people try to stay away from experiential because um, it can get a little weird for some people. It, but the way that I've always looked at it is if I have an experience that lines up with the word of God, then I'm in a safe place. And so that's why it's really important to read the, your Bible and to constantly meditate on it. So that way that when we do have an experience, we know it lines up and it's right. Uh, I'll share uh, my first experience that kind of disturbed me, but set me on this path of, of where God has me now. And it was really interesting. And it really shows how God speaks through people. But uh, um, there's a scripture in, I think, Deuteronomy that says, uh, in the mouth of two or three witnesses, let everything be established. And, it, and they were referring to uh, something as, as in a court of law. And then Jesus touches on it again. And then Paul says it again in the new Testament. So you have these three different, different witnesses speaking on the same thing. So whenever I read the word of God, I say, if I want to know a particular subject, it needs to be confirmed in two to three different places. And that's how I'll know that this is uh, divided correctly. And so I'm at a a men's retreat called Thrive. There is 500 men in the audience in this um, in this uh, sanctuary, and I'm with a group of 30 guys in the corner, and I'm worshiping God. And it's an amazing sight to see and to hear 500 men all worshiping God at one time. And there was no shame; they were they were really worshiping. And here comes one of the gentlemen. That's a friend of mine that I really, really respect. And he comes up during worship and he interrupts me and he says, Jacob, uh, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but God says that you're his prophet and he walks off <laughs> <laughs> and I'm kind of, I'm a little disturbed, you know, and I, 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 I thought automatically negative things about that, you know, uh, false prophets and all this other stuff. Uh, my Calvary background started to show. And so I, I, I begin to worship. They end worship. The pastor comes out. He has a line of, of altar, an altar prayer team. He says, anyone that wants prayer, come and give prayer. And I'm making my way through these 500 men to get to the other side of the altar. And I get there and I kneel. And the man says to me, he says, what do you want from God? Because you have his yes. And I felt like Solomon for a moment because I'm like, man, if I have, I really have God's yes. Um, all the things that I could ask for, I said, I, I just want childlike faith. And he goes to pray for me and he stops and he says, first off, God has called you to be a prophet. And I'm like, oh man, okay. I think God got really got to my attention now. And he starts prophesying to me, telling me things that happened when I was younger, things that I had forgotten, things that were going to happen. Um, he began to share with me all kinds of stuff and this crazy weight comes over me like a blanket. And I just felt this anointing rest on me. And at the same time as I felt it, he starts crying and weeping and just can't control himself. And we're both there in tears and snot and all kinds of grossness and, <laughs> and, uh, um, he ends his prayer. I get up to leave. He grabs me and says, there's things that, that God wants to say that people need to hear. So, so, uh, when he tells you to speak, you speak. And as I'm walking back through the crowd, another gentleman grabs me and says, Hey, there's things that God wants to say that people need to hear. 
Um, so when he tells you to speak, you speak, just don't do it in pride. And I, it, it was the coolest, craziest experience. But if I had not had, had not saturated myself in the word of God, the way that I had been, then I could have thought that that was just a, a crazy experience. But what was amazing was I heard three different people, but one voice. And it was the voice of God through his people. And so that's one of the, one of the experiences that I had got to witness is God working through imperfect people speaking. And that is a very biblical and, and, uh, and strong reality that God works through people <laughs> that we may not, we could be saying something and never know that God is through the Holy Spirit speaking a message to somebody. Um, and that's one of the ways that he communicates. So that's one experience. The second experience was just pause right there for just a second. Yeah. So I think that is so good. Um, and, and really scripturally that goes back to when people were, when the one guy was saying things about your past, like how could he ever have known that those are words of knowledge and that is in the Bible. And I, it is so rarely taught in, in the traditional church. It is just not taught. And it's not even, I don't know what they do when those scriptures are read. It's, I don't remember it's because it was never taught on, but, but that is a real thing. It's called a word of knowledge, which is a word that somebody will get that isn't from them. It's God giving them that word, which they will then turn and speak to another person. So, um, Go ahead. Let's hear your next experience. Well, yeah. And, and, and just to touch on the words of knowledge, I think this is when ministry gets really exciting. When <laughs> So on our first trip to Ecuador, just to take a pause, uh, another, just to talk about the words of knowledge, I, I had experienced that, but something else that I experienced is really neat. We were on the plane getting ready to go to Ecuador. Did I share this already with you guys? About the... Sure. Okay, well, uh, well, it's it's worth repeating. So there's there's a kid sitting next to me, and he's an agnostic, and he wants to debate because he knows that we're Christians, the Bible. And instead of debating with them, I'm sharing with him my my experience with the Holy Spirit and my personal uh, life. And he's intrigued. He's we're talking back and forth, and the pastor, Pastor Kurt is sitting in front of us and he turns back. Uh, this is the second time he turns back to speak to this young man. And he says, hey, sorry to interrupt again. He says, but I saw you. And the kid looks at him and says, you saw me? He goes, yeah. He goes, I saw you crying and full of de depression and fear and anxiety. And you wanted to kill yourself. And everything around you is falling apart and you don't know what to do or where to turn and you're lost. And you don't know what to do. And I'm staring with my jaw dropped at what Kurt had just said. So I'm staring at, at Kurt. And he said, is that true? And when I turn, the kid just lets go and all of these tears are falling down. And he said, yes, it's true. And he says, Jesus sees you. He loves you. Do you want to know him? And right there, that kid just nods his head. Yes, I want to know him. And I could see this boy transform right before my eyes just saying yes i want to know him from death into life it was another really neat experience to see the operation of the word of knowledge uh just completely changes things around us so anyways so you know what we only have like we're already at time so we only probably really have like five can you believe this goes so fast and it's so much fun so let's um how would you before we jump into another thing like how yeah, would yeah. you encourage these parents who are standing in faith on hearing from god like i know i want to say just one um little story that is is actually in my book as well which is coming out this month so i'm super excited about that um but one of the things I was sitting in my backyard and I was watching um, testimonies actually starting to build my faith. I knew that the truth at that point, like, wow, God does want my son well. And I just heard in my spirit, like God told me, call him Nathaniel. That's what he told me about my son. Well, Nathaniel um, means 
gift of God. And so the Lord was just showing me like, speak that over him, speak it out out loud, speak it over his life. And so when I did that, my little guy never blinked an eye. It was like nothing to him because I had, I had shared his full name with him since he was little. So can you talk about maybe what something like that? How do you encourage these parents to hear from the Lord through the Holy Spirit? Um, Cause everybody's at such a different point. Um, and so your point was you can hear from God through other people and it might not even be that radical of what you're saying, but we can sometimes hear somebody and God will work through that person and speak right to our hearts. And usually we'll know it. We'll walk away going, whoa, that was for me. Even if it's on a, a Facebook live or a video or something like that, it can, you can feel it. Sometimes it just gets quickened to you, whatever the word is that they spoke. Yeah. This is something that has been something that I've been sharing with other people. I I think I shared this on, on the last day of our uh, first year at Karis. And this was something that was just, just dropped on me as a little nugget. But for those who are watching and you're like, I don't hear from God like that. I, I've, I've never experienced anything like that. I would encourage you to open your Bibles to Mark 16, verse, verse 15, and meditate on this scripture. And when I say meditate, I mean stare at it. Don't just read a bunch of different scriptures. I mean meditate on it. Think on it. Close your eyes look at it, watch it, don't move from it, and just let God reveal through the Holy Spirit what these words are saying, because he's speaking to you, and Mark 16, verse 15 says, and he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, he who believes and is baptized will be saved, and he who does not believe will be condemned, And these signs will follow those who believe. So if you are a believer, meditate on what Jesus is speaking here. And in my name, in whose name? Jesus's name. They will cast out demons. And I really believe that sickness, disease, any form of of something that is coming against our bodies is demonic. And I will speak to cancers and sickness as if it was a spirit, but they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. If you, if you're not there yet, think of it as you will be given the ability through the Holy spirit to, to speak in new ways, to speak to different people, to speak to the rich and to the poor, to the drug addict, the father and the mother and the child in the way that the Holy Spirit can communicate. You will be able to speak on new levels. And I do believe in speaking in tongues, but but the Holy Spirit will give you new ways to speak. They will take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it will by no means hurt them. And they will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. So I believe also in, in confession, confessing the word and something that was revealed to me was I was taking my hands based on that scripture and speaking to these hands saying hands I command you to respond and to obey the scripture and when I lay hands on the sick by faith they will recover and so I would just encourage you to meditate on that until it becomes reality so when you take your hands it's the power of Christ and his word that heals the sick on who you're laying hands on. That's so good. And so much of that is bypassing your own brain to go, okay, it's not about me. This is not about me. This is about Jesus in me. This is about me believing what the word said. And faith is really, it's, it's like, um, and Dr. Darlene Mayo came on and did an amazing teaching, but she talks a lot about, you know, sometimes we have to create a new pathway in our brain. And so meditating on something and speaking things out help to do that. So you bypass your doubt or you bypass your unbelief and you start to form a brand new neuro 
pathway, which is faith. And that is so critical when you are speaking out the word, because we have to bypass like our brain, like logic mind. I talk a lot about that in my book. It's just, I was such a logic person and spent years trying to pull away from that. And it, I was just like, I don't get it. It took me so long. It was really a, quite a journey, but I'm so grateful that the Lord just stood with me in that journey to just, when I heard the word spoken as truth, it was like, okay, I'm ready. Let's go. Mm-hmm. So that's good. That's so good. Do you want to, um, do you want to be able to pray? And, and I, however you want to pray people, um, pray for people this evening, uh, as we close up. Um, but if you, however you want to do it, if you want to do the hands prayer, or if there's something else else that's on your heart, but I, I really just love, you know, there's so much that can be said about the Holy spirit and the way of the Holy spirit. And again, we're kind of scratching the surface. I feel like next time, maybe we should do like an hour, um, an hour sitting because there's so much to know. There's just really so much to know, but I just want, um, parents to know that, you have, if you are a believer, you have the Holy Spirit in you. And if you feel like you're deficient in that in any way, just ask the Lord. Just ask the Lord, Lord, show me, give me the Holy Spirit, show me how to stir him up in me. Um, or, you know, just call on that Holy Spirit. He's willing and ready and right there with you. And so um, you have that ability in you. And I just really urge you to to put your hands on your children and then know that it is not you that it is the lord so jacob how would you um how do you want to close us out this evening yeah i'll I'll close us out in some in prayer okay heavenly father we come before you in the mighty name of jesus your spirit knows no time no distance so whoever is listening to this to this live recording will be blessed by the hearing of your word. I pray, Father, that your spirit would open their eyes, that they would see all that you have done and provided for them, that Christ lives in them, the hope of glory. And I pray that they would have new eyes to read the gospels in a new way, to see how you operate, how you heal the sick, how you raise the dead, how you cast out spirits, how you have given your authority and your power to us through your Holy Spirit, that your ministry has not ceased, has not stopped, but continues through those who believe, and that we would take the baton that you have handed off because all of heaven is watching with anticipation for us. And I pray comfort, I pray love, and faith over everyone that's watching. And I pray just the persistence to believe and fight the good fight of faith, to know that you have accomplished everything that we need. And all we need to do is rest in the fact of your finished work. So I give you all the praise and the glory for what you're doing with everyone that's watching and the comfort that you give through your Holy Spirit, along with the power and wisdom and knowledge of who you are in them. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Jacob, for joining me this evening. I just really appreciate you. And I always appreciate your your heart to teach and um, and what you have to share with people. So thank you. Thank you so much. And I just want to thank um, those of you that tuned in this evening and or when you whenever you're able to watch. We are just really grateful for you. And I want to encourage you that the Lord is doing amazing things. Open your eyes to see it and just stand in that faith, be steadfast in it and have that. Sometimes it's the pain in, um, in what did you say? Persistence, persisting in the, in the pain. It's painful sometimes because we have to just really push down our natural selves and allow the Lord to rise up on the inside of us. So thank you again, um, Jacob. I'm just so grateful that you were able to come on this evening and we're going to have to do this again. It's just so much fun. I love these conversations because people need to be taught, but they want to be taught. I know that's where I was. I was like, 
so hungry when I reached that point of, you know, finding out what God wants my child well. And I just was, I could not get enough. So I just really appreciate your heart to teach people as well. Absolutely. And it's an honor to, to be able to, to speak with you and, and to continue to share my faith in Jesus Christ. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much. Have a great night, everybody. Bye.